Hello YouTube and welcome to another quick Gen 2 tutorial. Today we'll be looking at utilizing the command line DD to burn an ISO to a USB stick. Now there are a couple methods to do this. One is because of course using DD. The other one is using a utility called Unet Bootin. And I have both. If I start to type this in, it will pop up. You need root privileges to do this, so type in your root ID here, and up pops this. Now this is a fallback that you'll want to look at, and I'll go over this briefly before we get into DD, just to tell you. Now I have given up using these types of things here where you can choose one of these, and it's supposed to be able to download it, and then you can install it after you've selected, say for instance, you wanted to do Gen 2 from here and it is not even available so we will say pretend we didn't want to do Gen 2 from here say you wanted to try frugalware and then of course you can choose the stable the current etc and or if you had a disk image you could click on disk image point it to the disk image now one thing about this is you will need to have your USB stick formatted with FAT32 up front and on top of it being FAT32 up front, you'll need to have it mounted to a location on your hard drive, such as mounting it to, say, MNT slash USB, which is a typical location. Once you do that, you should be able to then tell it what the ISO is, the, it's USB, and in this drop-down box, you would see it. You click OK. It would go ahead and burn it. Now, when you use this tool, it puts a generic grub bootloader I believe down there and attempts to boot generically just the image files and things that are on the USB stick it's not really making it the way it would look if it were burned to a CD this will work a lot of times but I don't like the way it interfaces and I don't really care for it as much a much more reliable method is to use the command line DD so what you would do to do that is first you always want to make sure you know exactly what the drive is for your USB stick the best way to do that is to do an LS slash dev before you place your USB stick in so that you can see what you have available we look at this and you can see that hard drives are starting nowadays if they're SATA with SDA so you see SDA 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 for my first hard drive SDBB and all the partitions for it and then it goes on to sequencer etc and so we plug in the USB stick into any USB port that we can it will light up load itself will wait a few seconds and then if we repeat the command ls slash dev you will see now that instead of sequence being at the top of this you will see that it says sdc sdc1 that means that the usb stick that i plugged in there is this right here sdc sdc1 and that's what we want to make sure that our output is to it is very important to know this because if for some reason you aren't paying attention and you throw your output to say SDA or SDB, you could destroy a partition, you could destroy your entire hard drive by writing an ISO to it, and DD command is not forgiving. When you do that, you can destroy everything. So the next step now that you have that is to make sure that you have your ISO available. You can download any ISO from the internet, have it there. I'm going to go ahead and just minimize that for a moment. In this case, we are going to be burning the minimal 64-bit install for Gen 2 to my SD or to my USB card. The command line for that is DD, and then you want to set up your file size for the the chunks to be sent to the USB stick. So that's BS equals four. I like to use four megs. So that's four with a capital M and that is case sensitive. The next thing is if equals input file. 
Remember that, and you'll always remember this is what you want to be inputting to your S your SD card or your USB stick, etc. So if equals, and we're doing the install AMD64 minimal from Gen2 OF is your output file. We point that to equals. Always make sure you're equals. I don't know how many times I put a space there and forgotten the equals and I'll, it'll give you an error. But OF equals dev slash SDC. You don't want to do SDC1 because you're burning an entire ISO to the root of this hard drive. If you were to try to do this to SDC1, it would be trying to write it to just the first partition. After you've done this, you go ahead and hit enter. Now this is a relatively small ISO, so it shouldn't take us any more than 20-30 seconds to copy 260, I think, some odd megs of data. You will not see any information at this point. You might see your USB light flicker and go solid, bounce around for a bit. Nothing else will happen. If you're doing a much larger ISO, such as a 3 to 4 gig, or if you even have a larger one than that, then it could take you 10 to 15 minutes, or however long your write speeds are. In this case here, it says it took 31 seconds. It was recording at 8.4 megs per second, and it copied 266 megs to the SD, or I keep saying SD card, to my USB drive. At this point in time, you have the ability now to reboot the system, and if your system will support booting from USB, it should see this and boot just as if you had had the CD of the same data in there. Sometimes, however, you'll have an error where it can't see the SD card as the... Ah, there I go saying SD card. I apologize to anybody if I keep saying SD card, I'm meaning USB stick. When you're booting to a USB stick, there are some OS's that they have hardwired into their live DVD and live CD media that they're looking for a real CD tray or DVD tray. Now that can be confusing to the boot media and it will not boot because it cannot find it. And even if you try to point it to dev slash SDC1 or dev slash SDC, it will sometimes fail. A tool you can use to try to repair that is ISO Hybrid. So if you type in ISO Hybrid and then the name of the file or the, I, the ISO, it will attempt to go in there and make it so it will work when you try to use DD again to burn it. Now I'm going to pause real quick while I check to verify where you find the ISO Hybrid and I will be right back because that is something that doesn't come default that you would have to install a package to get. And we are back. Now a really good tool that I use to find information like this is eQuery and I have done some videos about this but I always forget too which command we need to use. Now, I did use eQuery belongs ISO hybrid it searched for ISO hybrid came back and said that you can install this with the package sys linux and it is version 4.07 that I have installed so little tidbit in there about that so if you're looking for ISO hybrid so that you can try to fix the the ISO to burn it to a USB stick then that's what you would need to install to get that program Again, this is a very useful tool. I use it for 99.9% .9 of all of my ISO burns to USB sticks, and it works most of the time. If it does not work, it is not a fault of the DD application, but normally a fault in the way that the ISO has been built. I hope this helps you out, and I'll try to keep this short. So I will sign off for now. So if it's morning, evening, noon, or night, whatever you're having, I hope you enjoy it. I hope this helps. And uh, good burning and enjoy those live DVDs on USB. Thank you all. We'll talk to you later. Bye.